So I'm in a 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Maybe like two, three weeks ago, the blower motor went out on the owner. She brought it over. I looked at it real fast. And with the scope, I looked at the blower motor and the motor looked bad. So I'm like, okay, it needs a blower motor. Then I looked at the resistor and the resistor where it plugs into the connector was melted as well as the connector itself. So I told her, okay, so we're gonna replace the blower motor, the resistor and the harness going to the resistor. So we ordered all the parts. I went ahead and put everything on only to find out it's still not working. Great. So now it's time to make that call. I already called the owner, told her what's going on. Of course, she's not happy because that just means the car's not fixed and it's gonna cost her more money. I pulled up a wiring diagram just to see what we have, what I have to check. So we got power coming to the blower motor because this thing is ground side switched. So I started tracing back the grounds, you know, working my way all over here. And then I check right at the connector that goes into this thing. The power is in ground and everything looks good. We have our power, we have our grounds. But when it came time to get this connector out of here, I couldn't get it out. So I grabbed a mirror and I come from the backside and I'll try to show you guys the pictures. And looking closely, I'm like, that connector kind of looks like it's melted. So sure enough, I tried to get it out of here and I'm not even exaggerating. I spent the last 30 or 40 minutes trying to get this connector out of here. And it just came to a point where you just got to pry it out. And look what happened, guys. This connector is completely melted that it tore a piece of the plastic out of the unit. You see that? That's crazy. And what caused all of this? The freaking blower motor. The blower motor was bad, okay? So it was creating all this resistance. Resistance equals heat, and it melted anything in its path. And of course, the owner kept driving. You know, when she first brought up this problem, I told her, bring it over here ASAP so we could take care of it. She kept on driving because she said, oh, uh, only high speed would work. Of course, it goes into like that default uh, mode, right? When the blower motor resistor burns out, only high speed works. But then she said it got to a point where sometimes she would hit a bump and the, the fan would just turn off completely. And then if she hit another bump, it would start back up again. So unfortunately, it's going to need more parts. This connector's trashed. This thing is trashed. It's about two weeks later and we are back with this Jeep. Now the owner ended up going to a salvage yard and they sold her a complete unit right here. And it looks like everything matches up to the type that's on her car. Actually, this one has like the tow haul button right there. And hers doesn't, but it doesn't matter. Because all we need to use is this panel right here with the controls. And all of this looks like it matches up. All of this looks the same. So I'm not going to use this entire uh, fascia. I'm just going to end up removing. Is, it poss is that even possible? Yeah, it looks like it. I'm going to end up removing just this one panel. Oh, and here's the, the biggest thing. So it came with all the wires attached to it, which is good. And this one, as soon as I detached the little red locking tab, push the button, and guess what? It came right out just like it's supposed to. It wasn't melted in place like this one and how I had to pry it apart and it just tore all of the plastic trying to separate it. And hopefully by replacing this control panel and I'm going to end up splicing in this harness, we could go ahead and get this fixed. As you can see, I got the whole panel removed out of the dash. And don't worry, these uh, wires are not being stressed. This whole thing is just hanging out right here. So all I'm going to do right now is go ahead and transfer over the new panel into the existing like fascia. Because this one looks perfectly fine. I don't see any issues with it. It's, it's sure it's dirty, but it's just as dirty as the one that came out of the salvage yard. So there's no point for changing the whole thing. So let me start removing all these little fasteners all the way around. We'll get that swapped over. Now, as far as the connector, all the wires match up perfectly, uh, color for color. So that's a good sign. Everything looks real good. And uh, yeah, we're only going to be splicing in the main connector, the one that melted. We're not going to be dealing with this other one that's attached right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this tape and get rid of this connector because we only need the large one. So a little bit of a change of plan here. I did end up going with the new fascia from the uh, salvage yard only because, you know, I found out that basically you see how the new one has a cigarette lighter here and on hers, it's just busted off. The connector is still sitting back here, but you can see the plastic housing is all busted off. So it wasn't going to sit in place. And I'm like, you know what? This one's not perfect, but at least it's here. And it's so easy to just remove a few screws and that's it. So we got everything on this panel that we want. I got the new connector installed. Everything has been crimped and heat shrinked, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and put some electrical tape on it. There we have it. And now I'm going to go ahead and put some Tesla tape on it. Looks pretty clean to me. 
everything looks good all the connections are nice and solid uh let's plug everything in and cross our fingers that it's gonna work i'm not even crossing my fingers i'm horrible at this Ugh, that was so hard <laughs> So everything is plugged in behind here. It's the moment of truth. I have not tried it yet. Let's see if this blower motor works. Light came on. That's good. It works. Yes. <laughs> so happy. Um, so that's great. Owner is going to be super happy about this. You know, guys, honestly, to uh, tell you the truth, I'm not charging her for this repair because when she first brought it to me, yeah, I saw the burned wires on the blower motor on the resistor. And it's why I said we got to change out those pigtails as well as a new blower motor, new resistor, and you know, so all that stuff. But anyways, after I did that job and the parts still wouldn't work, you know, it sucks for me because I, I don't like not being able to fix someone's car, but I feel so horrible for the owner. Cause they dump money into this trying to get their car fixed and only to tell them hey there's something else that's wrong you know so i told her look here's what i'm going to do if you could bring me this part i'll install it for free so as you can see i just heard the blend door switch so everything is working yep even that one's moving and i'm not going to charge her for this guys sure it took maybe 30 40 minutes of my time um, but I'm glad everything's working. I could already feel heat coming out of here because the car hasn't been sitting for too long So I got all of the center console put back together I just have to go ahead and clean up my tools now and this thing's all set uh, I did start pushing buttons around here just to make sure everything's working and everything looks really good We got nice hot air blowing everything's nice and quiet No noise from the blower motor because obviously all that stuff is new the blower motor the resistor the harnesses all that stuff is good and you know this is the type of thing that um you know you start to double think yourself because you know i'm over here crimping and heat shrinking the new pig pigtails and you know to get all the melted wires out of the equation and you finally turn the car on and it still doesn't work and the first thing my mind went to was i must have made a bad connection somewhere so i spent a good maybe 15 20 minutes looking over my work when in fact there was nothing wrong with my work the problem was that there was another problem which is right here all this stuff was melted and this owner has been driving for so long with no heat because of this problem i'm really happy about this because as you can see it's raining it's a cold day it was even snowing it's it's freaking crazy okay it was just like 60 degrees the other day uh but it was even just snowing just a few minutes ago that's crazy so anyway nice and warm inside of here and the owner can come pick up her car Today in the garage, I got a 2007 Yukon. You can see we got a whole Christmas tree of lights on. Um, and one thing I experienced right now that I didn't really know about is a car not wanting to start. Let's see if it does it again. Turned off, let's see. It was a crank, no start. It wanted to start sometimes, but it just wouldn't grab and I had to uh, attempt to start it like four times. again that time it started first time it took like four tries anyway uh yeah whole christmas tree of lights on we have to change a oil pressure sensor you can see the oil light just came on right there and we get a low oil pressure warning on the dash so we need a oil pressure sensor and this is all stuff that the owner just wants done he's like here's the parts put them on okay so that's where we're at. So that's what we got to change. Oxygen sensor, camshaft sensor, oil pressure sensor, and a purge valve. Sorry about the noise, guys. I know it's super annoying. I have no idea why this thing is beeping like crazy. I'm assuming because the brake light is on. And I pulled the lever down here, but that's disengaged. Who knows? Maybe the brake fluid is very low. But the engine, I don't know. It just doesn't sound very good to me. Yeah, I don't know. It's a new truck to the owner. He just bought it, so guess what? You're buying someone else's problems. That's what you're doing. Anyway, let's get started with uh, doing some of these repairs. Oh, this Yukon is on some uh, twisted metal type of stuff. <laughs> so I decided to start with the crankshaft sensor. Here goes the old one right here, right next to our new one. And this thing was an absolute nightmare to get out of there. Like completely seized in place, but thankfully it did not break off. And it just goes right here in front. 
you can see the hole back there where it goes so i have some cleaning to do and uh pop in the new center and then we'll move on to the next thing i'm all done with the new center you can see it installed and plugged in right there i'm gonna go ahead and put the belt back on the engine now the belt for the ac needs to get replaced see down there how cracked that belt is it's a separate belt from the uh, serpentine belt so i'll let the owner know about that the main drive belt itself is fine it looked like someone replaced it not too long ago so we're not going to worry about that so i figured while i'm in the engine bay already maybe we should take care of the oil pressure sensor which is back there i've never changed one but i hear it's a real pain in the butt if you're not going to remove the entire intake manifold which those are not my intentions so since i've never changed one of these oil pressure sensors on this uh, 6.2 liter i'm looking up a youtube video right and uh they're saying you have to like disconnect the evap line and the fuel line to get it out the way so i figure you know what um let me just go ahead and follow the youtube video and uh try to do that so i figured if i'm disconnect the fuel line i want to bleed any fuel out of the system right so i came over to the trader valve for the fuel rail Took off the cap, and I'm pushing a button right now, guys. Absolutely no fuel coming out this thing. Let me grab a screwdriver to show you guys. Push it lightly. All the way down. Nothing at all. This truck has not been sitting that long. There should still be fuel in the system. If I had to put my money somewhere, I'd say that's the reason why this thing has a hard time starting. And why... You have to crank it over a few times. Uh, it's losing fuel pressure, I bet you. So <laughs> that's another issue. Uh, but again, it's not here for that. We have to change out this oil pressure sensor. So I got the fuel line disconnected. You can see I got my rag underneath it. And again, no fuel pressure at all. Uh, but, you know, it's time to remove the EVAP line. And I'm like, okay, let me go ahead and disconnect. And look what I see, guys. The purge valve isn't even plugged in. We have a code for this. It's why we're replacing the purge valve today. <laughs> it's not even plugged in. Oh my goodness. Who was here last? Anyway, it's still getting a brand new purge valve because we have it here. We got it from Rock Auto. We are not sending just a purge valve back. It would cost you more money to send it back than with the part, uh, you know, its value. So it's getting uh, the brand new part. And plus, it's a AC Delco purge valve. I have no idea which purge valve is on the car right now, but the one we have is a good one. So I'll make sure to plug it in after we're done here that's crazy and i just thought about something this could also be contributing to why the engine doesn't want to start not only are we losing our fuel pressure very quickly but let's just say that this purge valve is stuck open it's super common for them to be stuck open so if it's stuck open upon startup that's a massive vacuum leak of course the engine wouldn't want to start and even if it's not stuck open these purge valves normally turn on when you like maybe a few seconds after you start up the engine. You can see the connector is plugged in. So it wouldn't be far fetched for the PCM to activate the purge valve a few seconds after it starts and open up this uh, valve, which creates a massive vacuum leak. And <laughs> we've seen that the car actually turns on, it stumbles for like one or two seconds and shuts off. You know, it's just. Things on top of things, you could, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> so I managed to unscrew the oil pressure sensor and I also managed to drop it down. You could see it down there. This is just a screenshot. So I spent the next half hour trying to get that oil pressure sensor out. <laughs> sure, I could have just left it, but it just goes against everything in my nature. god i can't believe i was able to grab it on my very first attempt isn't that crazy <sighs> so <laughs> i dropped the oil pressure sensor and it fell behind the engine and i'm like well we're never getting that back but then i'm like i never like to do that it just 
it's a bad practice. First of all, I'd like to show the customers, here's your old parts, you know, to confirm that I did, did change them. But second of all, you know, just leaving old parts just laying around in the engine bay because you can't get to them or you drop them. Uh, I don't like that. It just, to me, it doesn't seem very professional, you know, but that's just my opinion. That's why I spent a good 20 minutes trying to get this thing out, even though I really didn't have to. I could have just left it alone. Eventually, it would have fell off somewhere where all dudes driving and no one would have ever known. But that's not how I like to do things. But I'm still mind blown. I was like, you know what? Let me try this. I don't think it's going to work, but let me give it a shot. And it worked the very first try. So now that I got the sensor out, the next task is to get the little filter out. So I'm going to try to get you guys a shot of this thing. And it's back there. See inside the hole, there's a little piece of plastic. Yeah, we got to get that out. What a freaking nightmare. And God forbid you drop anything while trying to put the new part in. So the oil pressure sensor is all done. Everything's plugged back in. Got the fuel line reconnected. You can see it right there. I got the new purge valve installed. You can see it right there. And of course, everything is plugged in. So at this point, the only thing I have to do left is the upstream oxygen sensor. And I believe it's the one on this side of the engine. Let me double check. But what I want to do right now is let me go ahead and reconnect the air intake tube and uh, start the engine up and just make sure it idles fine. I suspect we're still going to have that hard cranking issue because like I said earlier, I think we have some sort of a fuel delivery issue or a fuel pressure bleed off, something of that sort. Uh, so let's see how it starts up. So I primed the fuel pump and I went out there to check for leaks. I don't see any fuel leaks. So let's see how it starts. God, this engine sounds like crap. <laughs> okay, so first time, as you can see, it started right up. Try that again. It starts right up, guys. It's not acting like how it was acting before. Hmm. Well, that's a good sign, right? Uh-oh. Oil light just came on. Let me go ahead and clear the codes, uh, see what happens. You know what, let's just grab the scanner and look at oil pressure. All right, so here's the codes. I haven't cleared anything yet. You can see we got uh, bank two, sensor one, oxygen sensor codes. I guess that's why they want us to change that sensor. Uh, misfire detected, just like a random, because there's no specific cylinder. There goes our camshaft code, our large evap leak, and our brake switch circuit high. That's why our brake light is coming on. I don't see anything here for oil pressure. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let me go ahead and save this and then I'll clear the codes. So I cleared out the codes and we have two of them that came back immediately or basically they wouldn't even delete. So our front right impact sensor, which I'm not worried about that. And then brake fluid low. Hmm. Let me go check that brake fluid. Maybe that's why our brake light is turning on. Anyway, uh, besides that, Codes are cleared. Let me cycle the key on and off. And guys, place your best now. I got a good feeling that that oil light is going to come right back. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I did, after it was running the first time, I did go out there and check the oil pressure sensor, and it's not leaking at all. It's nice and dry around the new sensor. The nice thing is, it actually starts up real fast every single time, not like before. Let's see how long it takes for that oil light to come on. There goes our brake and there goes our oil. <laughs> That's crazy. You know what? Next step, uh, let's go check the brake fluid and let's go check the oil on this engine. So I took off the brake cap right here just to have a look. And you can see the max is right here. I know it's hard to see, guys. But the minimum mark is actually the split right here in the uh, reservoir. And the fluid level is below the minimum. It's like right here. Hopefully you guys can see that if I go ahead and shake this around a little bit. 
So what I'm going to do is add fluid. I'm not going to completely max it out. Uh, the reason why the fluid is low is because obviously the brakes need to be done on this thing. Uh, so I'm just going to add enough maybe to get up to like right here above the minimum mark. And there we have it. Hopefully you guys can see that it's about right there now. Uh, so let me go ahead and start the engine back up. Let's see if that brake light turns off. Look at that, the brake light went off, but so did the oil pressure. Oh, there goes the oil pressure. <laughs> but look, the brake light did not come back. So that was the issue. The brake fluid is too low, this thing needs brakes. Um, as far as oil pressure, let's go ahead and check this oil. All right, so I checked the dipstick like three times and it definitely has oil in it, but this thing looks like brand spanking new oil, guys. It's hard to tell, but the oil comes up to right here so it's well past the full mark it's right there it's hard for you guys to see but it's it ends right where my finger is so brand spanking new oil it's even overfilled a little bit and to be honest guys if we look at the oil pressure sensor that came out this truck i mean it looks used but this does not look like a original oil pressure sensor back from what 2007 and also keep in mind the owner just bought this truck Hmm, why do you think they sold this truck? Starting to all add up, isn't it? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, there, it's it's not an oil pressure sensor issue. I almost forgot. Let's do what I said I was going to do. Let's pull up the data pad for the oil pressure and see what our actual oil pressure is. So just that idle here, look at our oil pressure PSI. 2.3 one psi that's nothing guys this, this engine is no good i bet you and it's not the oil pressure sensor because let's go ahead and raise the rpm you can see as the rpm goes up it creates oil pressure and the engine starts to sound better but as you get down back to that like one psi the engine goes right back to sounding like there's wrenches inside of the engine. It's not an oil pressure sensor issue. It's not a oil pump issue. This is, to me, honestly, it looks like a worn out engine that wasn't maybe uh, maintained properly or neglected or whatever reason. How many miles are on this thing? I wonder if we could get that information. Sorry about the beeping, guys, but as long as that oil pressure light is on, I, I fear that that beeping is not gonna go away. Engine hours, 6,000 hours. 76% oil left. <laughs> Where is our mileage? I swear, I just saw it here. There you go. 166,000. That's kind of a lot of miles, but not really. If it was a Honda or Toyota, I'd be like, that's nothing. You know, but uh, I don't know. That seems kind of like a lot. So, um... Oh, and I did do a crankshaft relearn via my scanner. Um, did I really think it was going to make a difference? No, I mean, the car, it starts way better than it did before. There's no hesitation. It starts right up. Um, but it's just one of those things where if you change the part, just go ahead and do the relearn because it's part of the sequence. Uh, so I did it anyway. Uh, but the truck does start much better now. And I caught it again, guys. <laughs> so I let the truck sit maybe like a minute or two. I start looking around what I'm going to do with this uh, sensor, right? Then I decided, you know what, let me go ahead and turn the wheels all the way to the left so I can get better access to the sensor. I come in here, start the truck up, and guess what? It didn't want to start. It was a crank, no start. And then on my second attempt, boop, started right up. Guys, I'm going to go right back to my original theory, fuel pressure. So I raised up the truck, put a jack stand underneath it so I get more clearance. I removed all of the fasteners holding on this side of the fender liner. And you can see there goes our upstream oxygen sensor right there. Now, my oxygen sensor socket is a 3 h drive so <laughs> as you can see i got all these extensions and i couldn't get it to budge so next step is i'm just gonna go ahead cut the wires off of the sensor and put a 22 mil impact sensor on it and use my biggest impact gun to just run the sensor out just like that if they don't want to cooperate cut them off here's another pro tip for you guys when it comes down to oxygen sensors try not to waste time on stupid things uh for example the sensor is stuck out so far 
that I had enough space to put my Deep Mill 22 socket on it, but I didn't have enough space to put my swivel socket on it because it was running into all of this crap right here. So this is the swivel I'm talking about, like an impact rated swivel socket. There wasn't enough clearance. So what do you do? You grab your hammer and you knock off this portion of the sensor. As you can see, I already cut the harness and the next step was to just knock this off. It's in the way, it doesn't really matter. It's all getting replaced anyway. And with that out of the way, we could actually just use a standard sort 22 mil socket with our swivel extension. And now we could get our impact gun right on it. Don't waste time guys on stupid crap like this. If it's in your way and you know it's getting replaced, cut it off. And there you have it with the impact gun came off in like two seconds threads still look really good we're not going to have any issues putting on a new sensor and yeah a job like this google sideways for someone if you don't know what you're doing and you could end up eating a ton of time and do whatever you have to do to uh get your impact gun on the o2 sensor here we have it new sensor is installed the other end is all plugged in and this thing's good to go uh so i'm gonna go ahead put the fender liner on it get the truck back on the ground and just go park it on the street I'm not gonna drive this thing around because honestly, I don't feel like being left stranded somewhere in this turd. I don't know. Honestly, I don't think this was a good purchase because it seemed like uh, you're gonna have to dump a ton of money into this thing to get it fixed. And who knows, may need a whole new engine if the oil pressure really is that low on this thing, which I'm assuming it is. So I'm curious that since the oil pressure goes up while you're accelerating, I wonder if while we're driving, the oil light turns off and the beeping will stop. Oh, it does. So he's not constantly having to deal with this because, and look, there it goes again. But as long as you stay moving, watch it turn off. I know I said I wouldn't drive it, but I was just curious. And there it goes, it turned off. Watch it come right back on. There it goes <laughs> and there it goes off again yeah it only builds up oil pressure while you're revving up the engine or accelerating that's crazy well at least he's not constantly dealing with that beeping noise but i i'd say he's got a good 60 percent of the time that that noise is on and it's super annoying and still no check engine light i'm happy to see <laughs> at least our repairs held up um it is what it is so i'm gonna go park this thing and that'll be it guys oh look this thing is so new well at least new to him it still has the papers you know the foot pad papers whenever you buy a car <laughs> uh, what a turd before i go guys um i was just thinking you know that stuff that you put in the engine i don't know if it's meant for like lifter tick or something but it's like super thick stuff i mean it's got the viscosity of like honey I wonder if something like that would work for an engine like this for that oil pressure. I mean, of course, it's not going to fix anything, but if it could help to keep the oil light off long enough so it's not constantly annoying, you know, if the if the oil gets that thick, maybe it could keep that sensor happy. I don't know. What's your guys' opinion on it? To me, that stuff, I'm not a fan of any of that stuff. Don't put that stuff in a good working car. But this car clearly has a issue, uh, internal issue with clearances and bearings and oil pressure so this might be a perfect candidate for something like that right i don't know i might i might bring it up to the owner but what's your opinion on stuff like that so we had a 2005 f250 with the 5.4 v8 uh this thing got towed in because it doesn't drive it starts right up every single time and it idles but it won't move uh you can push the gas pedal rpms don't go up it just won't move at all Anyway, so it got dropped off and they said, change the accelerator pedal. Okay, so no looking at it, no find out what's wrong with it, nothing. Just, hey, the truck's coming over, change the accelerator pedal. So I get in the truck the day it came over and I'm looking all around. There's no part in here. So I have to tell them, hey, where's the accelerator pedal? So this is when I started to get in contact with the owner and she was like, oh, well, they sold me the wrong part. So I had to return it back to the auto parts store. And, and honestly, I don't know what part I'm looking for. I'm like, okay, great. Keep in mind, this is a car that was hassled about because it needs to get done ASAP. They need it done right away. Well, spoiler alert, guys. This truck's been sitting in front of my house for two weeks. <laughs> it 
It just turns into stupid BS. You know what I mean? So anyways, while she's out looking for a so-called accelerator pedal, I spent, I, I figured, you know what? Let me go ahead and spend 10 minutes looking at this thing, see what's going on. Immediately using scan data, I could rule out that there is nothing wrong with this accelerator pedal. Now there was code saying like A, B, correlation and blah, 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 right? So I could see how someone could go down that rabbit hole of throwing parts at it. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with this accelerator pedal. The problem I'm actually finding is the throttle body. It's uh, not doing what it's supposed to. It's very hard to move. And when you actually actuate the throttle body, it's always supposed to like come back to its normal position, like spring loaded. This one doesn't. If you move it, it says exactly where you move it. So that's what's going on here. That's why the car runs because the, the, the throttle body, it's like stays closed, right? If you leave it there. And that's good enough for the car to idle. Um, but once you try to give it gas, the car won't do anything. It won't go anywhere. So... I told the owner, hey, it needs a throttle body, right? So she goes to Advanced Auto Parts, gets a throttle body, brings it over, and we're already a few days into this thing. Because it's for some reason, whenever I tell them I need something, it takes them forever to get back to me. So they bring me a throttle body, and guess what? They bring me the wrong one, because this is an electronic throttle body. You know, one of these types, you know, it's all electronic. The one they brought me was a classic throttle body that has, uh, that uses like a cable driven, you know, a mechanical one. So I told him, you're going to have to return this. This isn't going to work. And after like another two days, she finally said, oh, it turns out they can't get the part. No one has it. So I said, you know what? Two weeks ago, I told you I could get this throttle body off of Rock Auto. And it was, guys, it was around the same price that she was buying these throttle bodies from these auto parts stores. So it's not like she was, you know, up shit's creek with all like with the price of it or anything. So I told her, hey, I could just get this thing on Rock Auto like I told you two weeks ago. So she goes, go ahead, fine, get the part ordered and. So here we are. It just came in today. And like I said, on the original throttle body that's on the car, on this butterfly right here, if you actuate it on the car, on the one that's on the engine right now, it actually stays in a position that you leave it. Look at this. You see how it comes back? That's what it's supposed to do. The one on this truck doesn't always come back. Sometimes it does, but a lot of times it doesn't. And that's what the car is fussing about because it can't control the throttle body like it wants to. And once the car sees that fault, that it can't control the throttle body like it wants to, boom, it's a done deal. It will not let the car move. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, swap these out and I'll show you the condition of the old one. All right, so I got the old throttle body off of the truck and you can see a difference right away, basically. See that? First of all, it doesn't sound right. The gears don't sound right. And if you open it up manually, it stays open. No problems at all. The new one, sorry guys, really difficult one hand. I'm trying to not actuate it too much. You don't want to go moving these electronic ones too much. You don't want to damage them, but it's very clear that the second you move it, it immediately comes back to where it's supposed to be. Whereas this one, Come on guys, look at that stuck to auto body. Of course this car is not gonna wanna move. It sees the input of where the uh, TPS is at and it's a done deal. It just shuts everything down. It goes basically uh, worse than a limp mode because at least a limp mode would let you like uh, creep the car along. This doesn't wanna let you move at all. Let me go ahead, pop on a new one. We'll start it right up. If I have to, I'll use the scanner to do some sort of a throttle relearn if it's, uh, if it's needed on this truck. And then go from there. I'm pretty confident that this truck is going to drive away once I put this new throttle body on it. Alright, so I'm pretty much done here. As you can see, everything is reassembled. Everything is plugged in, it looks like. So let's go ahead and start it up. See if this uh, accelerator pedal actually works and the car can drive now. And so here goes first startup. Starts up. Let's see if the accelerator pedal works. Yay, it actually works now. <laughs> Go figure. No, but it needs an accelerator pedal. Yeah, mm -hmm. they would have been up Shit's Creek on that one. And this is a... Uh... Okay, so the person who owns this car, I wasn't in contact with her. I was in contact with like her brother, which I normally deal with him. I've worked in his car a few times. So when it turns out they couldn't find the correct accelerator pedal for this car, he told me, Hey, man, can you just look at the car instead of them just saying what's wrong with it? I told him, look, when people, there's only two ways repairs go when they come here. Basically, number one, 
people say here's the part put it on my car at that point i am not responsible if this does not fix your car because you brought it to me saying put this part on whether it fixes it or not i did my job as from the other half is you got to pay for my time to look into the actual problem and see if it's going to fix the car i properly diagnose the car and tell you what's actually wrong with it and he's like you know what yeah let's just go ahead and do that and i'll pay you if i have to for your time and uh you see you see this is a perfect example if they would have just went the route that they wanted to and say hey put this accelerator pedal on waste of money so anyway let me go ahead clear the check engine light and see if there is a throttle relearn for this vehicle and that'll be it i'll take it out for a test drive just to make sure it does work all right so there we have it guys the truck is now moving and driving uh the check engine light came back immediately like the second i started up the engine so unfortunately i already took my scanner in the house and i even turned it off so now i have to go get my scanner once again i know that's not related to me because this car had other check engine lights on but i just want to make sure i didn't leave anything unplugged because it was like immediate as soon as that engine started that check engine light was back so i just want to confirm that it's not like i left a center unplugged if it's anything else i'm not concerned with it that's not what it came here for anyways the truck now drives after sitting here for two weeks and it did not need a accelerator pedal like the owner wanted to put on it so one final look at the scanner here we got our classic p1000 which is to be expected that's normal but we also have a p0446 we have a vent control circuit so that definitely was not me and has nothing to do with the work i just did so that check engine light is staying on until they want to get that diagnosed and fixed and this is a work truck so it's probably not going to get fixed or they'll uh, attempt to get it fixed about uh, two days before emissions is due.